for our chapter on global styling colors, make sure you've got the WordPress document with the codes for these two colors, the yellow and the maroon that we will be using because we will need to bring them in. At the very beginning, when we brought in this template, I told you to observe when the template was still in the library, it had different colors. And then when we brought it in, the colors changed. That is because there is a setting called global styling. The global styling you find here on the left next to the paintbrush. And as you select it, you will see it says a current style, overpass, and then these colors. For this chapter on colors, we only focus on current style and these eight swatches below that. These patches, these little blocks, swatches. We only focus on that because this is where the color and the style is determined. Every time you install Brizzy, Brizzy puts it on a default style called overpass. You can see there are the eight colors that is being used for overpass. They also include other styles that you can go and choose. Magazine, go ahead and select magazine and look at what happens to your page. You see the fonts change and you see the colors change. Let's go a little bit downwards here and make it like so. Under magazine, we have graceful. Again, we have color changes, very gracious. Ashen. Observe those changes. Let's go to something crazy. I remember one. Yeah, we, which one? Which one? Are we going to go for chubby? Okay, chubby. And then oblivion. You can go through all of them. And let's move to the top and just select overpass again. This, though, is not the theme that we see here. That is the same theme when we saw it in the library. Let's go through that process one time. Go to the page options toolbar in the bottom right, select and select clear layout. It's going to remove everything and we bring that page in again. Start building your page, go to layouts, select free, and then we select webno. And you can see webno has these pink colors and the dark colors. And that's not the colors that the default colors theme gave us. So how do we change that? Before you click here on import, start with the colors that the developers gave you. That will also give you the fonts that the developers gave you. And that will give you a good indication of what you want to achieve with your page. And then select here, replace global styling. And what Brizzy will do is now it will import the page and it will also import this global styling scheme for us. Select and click import this layout. And there we go. This is now the colors that we want. But yes, in my not being wise enough, you see the logo is back because we imported the same page again. So I'll quickly go through that process again. Move that up. We delete this one. Delete it and I'll go to this block. And I'll delete it and then we put our padding back. Styling around 25. Let me just type that in. My dragging skills aren't very good and I'm going to leave that. Here we are where we want it to be. Go to the styling on the left and you will see the current style is now set to webno. If you select, you will see webno as a style has been added here at the bottom. And now, there you go. This is the original style that you had seen. The colors on this page are tied to the colors here. If I select this button and I click on the color of the button, you will see there's a white little box around this swatch. It means this color was selected, which is set here. Go to our block, go to the colors or the overlay, and you will see the overlay is set to this swatch, which is this one here. Scroll down. Ah, let's choose the icons. Select the first icon, color, and you will see that the icon color is this pink. Same swatch. Scroll down, scroll down. You see pink, more pink, more pink. And I think you kind of understand what has happened here. And that is that all of these colors are tied to these swatches. Even the text, I'm pretty sure. Click on this text here, the gray and it's set to this one, second from the right. 
this pink one selected, click on the color and you will see it's not even selected. So this color was brought in automatically and that means that it's not tied to any of these colors over here. Now we are going to change out the colors finally to the colors we want, which is the yellow and the maroon. So we go into our document. I'll highlight the yellow code, copy that, go back. And here under styling, we go to the first one, which is the pink. I'll click on it and then I'll type in, I'll select and paste. And now we have changed everything that's pink, except this one didn't change. Right, so we have a few color changes, but we're gonna mix it up soon. Let's go to the next color, which is the maroon. And we select maroon here, copy that, go back. And then we choose this dark blue and we make that one maroon. But this is nothing like what we have on the front. Again, we'll switch that out in a very short bit. What about the rest of these colors? There are still six left. The most important one here is this one second from the right. This color here dictates the color of your paragraph of your text element. Every time you bring in a text element, go to the bottom, let's add a new block, create your own, go to add elements and bring in a text element and drop it. By default, when you click on it, you will see it's set to this color. So whatever you want your main text paragraph color to be, it's always a good idea that you make that one there, second from the right, that color. I like the gray for this design, so I'm not gonna touch it. Another color that's very important is this one on the right. You can put it anywhere you want, but it's always good to have a pure white. So if I click on it, you will see this selector is all the way to the top. That is a pure white color. And it's good to have that. The dark or the blacks that I usually use, they are here over on the left, but I'm only going to stick to this color. One more that you have to take note of is this little one here. This relates to icons. So whenever you bring in a new icon, we bring in a new block again, and I'll bring in an icon. And under the icon, I'm going to bring in a button. You see, they get their color from the third swatch on the left. Very important. I'll change the color here. Let's choose whether we want the yellow or the maroon. I'll go for the yellow. So we'll copy that yellow code again. And then I'm going to put that in and paste it. And you can see as I put it in, it changes. The reason I say I'll change this color here because we're going to actually assign this haphazardly, not always the same color. Delete this block and we delete this block. And let's scroll to the top and make changes. Switch it up. Start here, go to our colors, and we put this one on the yellow on the left. Then because we have this light background, go to our button, select the button. Background for the button, I'm going to put on our dark color. And then for the border, I select none because I don't want that border to be there. Change the titles as well. Let's make this dark as well. Same maroon color. Click on this one as well, maroon. And then the same for the text. We change all the colors. And the reason you have to do this is because there's a line break in here, which I'm not too fond about, but nothing you can do. Then below this, this one, we're going to make a dark color. So now we can assign it to this swatch. Right. I'm not going to change anything here. This is also good. This is right. This is right. This is right. And look at that. I changed really so little. I brought in my global styling colors over here. I set them up. Those that were already assigned in the template switched just like that. And then I made a few calls. I didn't like the color up here. I changed that and I assigned it. Let me just put this guy. Ugh, it's a place full of cats and dogs. Very many of them. So when your client says to you, I don't like this color, instead of having to go and then switch out the color for each and every instance where you had used that color, come to Global Styling, select the color and change it and it will update across your site. Global styling colors, you get it? I hope you get it. Try and work with it. 
if there's ever an instance that you don't want to use a global style color, you just want to use that color in that instance, all you need to do then is go to the colors and add your custom name there or choose it here from the selector and it will not tie it to the global swatch. But I recommend try and go for the global swatches as much as possible so that you can easily make changes if needed. Control Command S to save your work. Next, under global styling in the next chapter, we're going to talk about topography. This one a little tricky, but we're going to get the hang of it in no time.